Hey, what's up guys? We are going to be trying to cruise easily to Ultimate Champion today. As you guys can see, looking at our ranked profile, we currently only have five games to reach Ultimate Champion. We're going to be switching decks every single game, and I'm going to be breaking down why I think each deck is strong and why it might be a contender for you to choose for Ultimate Champion. So, as you guys can see, we have five different decks. I'll be breaking them down. I'll be telling you guys how to play them a little bit, and then we'll be jumping into a match. There's three reasons why people aren't able to hit Ultimate Champion. Number one, they don't actually play a good deck. Maybe you've got like a Witch Wizard deck with Elixir Golem and Rage, and the deck just is terrible. Number two, maybe your card levels are trash. And if that's the case, you can go over here, go to Classic Challenge, play any deck you want, level up your cards, and experience the deck, and try to learn how to play it. Number three is maybe you just don't understand how to play your deck and you're running a good deck, but you just don't know what you're doing. So you want to end up just leveling it up on classic challenges and getting better there. And classic challenges are kind of the way of learning how to play the game. You can also go to, you know, the trophy road and play there, but sometimes it's not fun if your card levels are a little bit lower. It might not be fun in Path of Legends if your card levels are too low. So definitely encourage you guys to go to classic, classic challenge. You can have every card unlocked, play there with whatever deck you guys see on the channel here or wherever you want to see it on like any other website. But for without further ado, let's jump into the action and break down the first deck of the day. This deck is really good at counter pushing. So we've got Giant Skeleton and Fisherman, two cards that are going to allow you to win bridge battles. The Fisherman can make sure that you pull all of your opponent's ranged units to your side of the map so your tower can focus it down. And also, you know, it makes sure that you pull things closer to the Mother Witch so you can finish it off and turn it into a pig. Giant Skeleton blocks up the lane so your opponent can't go in for too much stuff. If you're going to end up having a lot of bait cards in your deck, like Goblin Gang, Mother Witch, Rail, Rail Hogs, and then Zappies, your opponent's going to struggle to be able to Fireball, Poison, all that stuff at once. So this deck is all about counter push. Wait for your opponent's deck to be figured out. Find out when they don't have spells. And after you defend with your Giant Skeleton, Fisherman, whatever, you're able to go in for Rail Hogs and maybe even a Goblin Gang or Royal Ghost when their Elixir is low and punish them. So that's how we're going to be playing this deck today. First deck of the day. And as I said, we will be switching decks every single game. Hopefully we can win five in a row. And uh, yeah, super stoked to see everyone here. Love you guys. Let's have an awesome stream, all right? <clears throat> all right, so we're playing against someone that is apparently a gamer. Uh, I've, I've never understood why people end up having those type of names where they, uh, you know, they, they alternate all the letters and everything. It makes it harder to read. I'm a little bit more focused on the name than actually a game. So maybe maybe that's what it is. It's mind games. So the Goblin Gang's going to bait out a Barbrill. Not that bad of a trade for us. I mean, we get a negative one, but he also had to wait a bit for that to happen. When I see Barbarrel, I'm expecting it to not be a Mega Knight deck. If he's got Mega Knight, I'd be surprised. So we're going to go for Royal Hogs right there. Okay, so it's looking like Lumberjack Balloon Freeze. When we see Barbarrel, Lumberjack, and then also an Electric Dragon. So what I want to do here is I want to go in for a Giant Skeleton because it's going to be able to block the Lumberjack, and it's also going to tank for the Electric Dragon. So I'm not going to take any damage at all. It might have been better for us to go in for like a Mother Witch and then let the Mother Witch die and then maybe go in for a King Tower activation with like a Fisherman. But it's just, it's not worth it. You know, I'd rather conserve Elixir. If he goes in for an Inferno Dragon, I'd definitely go Zappies, but he's got P.E.K.K.A. Okay. So I'm going to go Mother Witch in the back and then we can go Zappies here and that will be able to pull the P.E.K.K.A. as far as we want. Or I can just go in for Zappies here and just make sure that he's not going to do much at all. Okay. So I'm going to go Goblin Gang just to ensure that we can body block and stop him from killing my Mother Witch. Oh my gosh, that was an interesting freeze. This guy is frisky. Very aggressive player. So with him having freeze out of cycle, I think I can go for Royal Hogs and just get a lot of damage. It's incredibly tough for someone that has a P.E.K.K.A. Freeze deck to have splash damage for Royal Hogs. So I saw that it's single Elixir, you went for a P.E.K.K.A. and a Freeze. That's 11 Elixir, you went for a Barbell, that's 13. What do you have for my Royal Hogs? Probably nothing. And we took that opportunity, we seized the tower, and that's what I was talking about earlier. This deck is about counter pushing. It's not a deck that you just go in for like a giant skeleton Royal Hogs push. No, you wait for the right moment, you unleash Devastation when they're down Elixir, and then you kind of just take control of the game. And that's what we're planning on doing here. And also after you already take a tower, what you can do is defend really minimally. You're able to go for like giant skeletons, mother witches, and then maybe even get like the giant skeleton a little bit further away so then the mother witch isn't going to die. I think he's going to be planning on freezing here, so I'm going to try to go for zappies away from my mother witch so then it doesn't all get hit by the freeze. And making those type of predictions is so important. Also, remember, his elixir is low, so what are we going to do? We're going to punish him other side immediately with our royal hogs, going for the goblin gang because we see the barber out of cycle, and now we're up a lot. So this deck is just so freaking good. Even if you lose a tower, you lose a lot of damage, you're probably going to get more from your opponent because they had to overcommit to get that damage. You got a lot of damage with the Freeze, right? Like, I'm not going to discredit. He, he did do well there. But at the same time, we did a little bit better because, you know, we were able to apply more aggression to him. Even though he's got the bird, the Phoenix is still the best card in Clash Royale. 
it's not going to matter that much. We can go for Royal Hogs and keep applying aggression so then he's not able to go for a freeze. A lot of times people are like, wait, you have to defend at all points. Well, not really. Look at him. He has to go in for a freeze on defense so he doesn't get 3 crowned. And then he doesn't have the freeze for their zappies, so we're able to guarantee a very dominant win. Out of all the decks today, I'm going to be trying to show you most of the decks without champions because I feel like not everyone needs to run champions. And this is one of the best decks in the game, if not the best deck in the game still without champions. It's just such a clean and easy and good deck. And if you look at all the cards, I don't think there's a single card in this deck that will actually get nerfed again. They're all like, you know... Maybe B tier cards, C tier cards, maybe A if you're counting like a giant skeleton or mother witch. And th those cards are not going to get nerfed by Clash Royale, but when you pack them together for a synergy, man, is it strong. And it's been one of the best decks in the game for a while, so highly encourage you guys to pick it up. Let's go on to the next one and let's keep going. Also, Garrett, thank you for the $2 donation. I hope you're having an amazing day. Really appreciate everyone that's taking the time to be here. I love you guys. Let's keep going. Can you do a classic challenge? I'll, I'll consider it for the future. If you guys want me to do a classic challenge, or if you guys want me to do something on stream, let me know. Uh, I read every single comment in the YouTube comment section, whether it's on a VOD or, you know, if you're watching this right now, I'll, I'll read your guys' comments. If you guys want to comment afterwards, I respond for two hours every single day. I love this community, and I wouldn't be able to do what I do every day without you guys, you know, supporting me. So, obviously, I'm going to take the time to reply to you guys, read every comment, and, uh, yeah, I just love you guys. So, thank you. I know that sounds really cheesy and uh, more emotional, but I do wake up every day and I'm like, wow, I'm very lucky to have this job and be able to play video games. Anyway, we're going to be going to the next game. This deck is really fun. Um, this deck is more so you build up an Elixir Collector advantage by dropping Elixir Collectors. You defend with your Elite Barbarians and your Lumberjack. And then, you know, you wait for the right opportunity and go Golem in the back. And then when you get a Golem push going, you try to drop your Dragon and Phoenix off to the right-hand side or the left-hand side, like hugging the outer corner of the arena so then it can bypass buildings and doesn't go and get kited to the other side. And then also, when you're up Elixir, it's just super hard to defend because the Lumberjack's raging up the Phoenix. It's raging up the Electro Dragon. So the Electro Dragon with the Golem, um, even if they kill the Golem, the Electro Dragon will reset the tower. And then the, the, it's basically like Elixir Golem, but even better because you'll get a huge elixir advantage with elixir collector and e-barbs are needed right now because you know electro giant is absolutely everywhere so e-barbs are really really good in this meta however if you are running the dark prince version uh you kind of need to use your elixir collector on defense to pull the electro giant seems stupid but that's the only way you can win it you can run dark prince instead of elite barbarians if you need to it's not as good against electro giant you'll probably lose unless you use your elixir collector on defense um and then you can also run skeleton dragons or you can run baby dragon instead of phoenix Every time I run Phoenix today, I will be giving you guys deck substitutions. The deck is super good because you have Tornado and Bar Barrel, so then you're just going to have great defense against all the bait decks in the meta. As we jump into the game, I'm going to give a shout out to all the people that donated. Um, there are a couple again. So uh, iForward says, I love the content. You're an awesome dude. Thank you, man. I love you too. And then Garrett again says, I watch. Okay, so wow. We, uh, we immediately got E-Giant, so I'm glad that we have the E-Barbs. I watch your content every day, man. You always make me happy on crappy days. Happy days come and go, man, and I'm glad that, you know, you're here with me, and uh, yeah, if you ever have a bad day, just know that you're not alone. There's a lot of people in this world that have bad days, and you're going to get through it. I 100% believe in you guys. If you ever have a crap day, just know that I, I also have bad days. You guys see me, like, happy all the time because I'm playing a video game that I enjoy, but in real life, I also struggle a lot, too. Like, I, I don't have great days every single day. I've had a lot of great days recently. I typically have better days than worse days if I'm playing Clash Royale and doing things that I enjoy, but, you know, just know that... You know, the lows in life suck, but when you experience a high right after, the better parts in life will just feel that much better. Uh, there was also another thing, Dragon Ball King, thank you for the $5 as well. Anyway, jumping into this game, you guys saw that I defended with Elite Barbarians, and then I Elixir Collectored afterwards. The main way that you want to win this matchup in particular is getting an Elixir Advantage and then punishing the opponent. It's not necessarily easy to do, but... Oh, I could have activated King Tower with this Phoenix. I, I could have definitely pulled that directly to the King Tower. I that would have been the right play. I wasn't really thinking... Um, I, I wanted to get an Elixir Advantage and then start my Golem because he d did a negative one trade with the Lightning on the Elixir Collector. And then also on top of that, like, I don't think he has the the right answers in this in cycle. So we'll see. Maybe he does. Maybe I'll be a sad sir, but we'll have to wait and see if that's going to happen. So I'm going to go Tornado here so the Bomber is going to die to the Golem. I don't know if this is worth it. It doesn't seem like it is. Um, if my Phoenix dies and I'm super sad, yeah. I wanted my Phoenix to re revive there, but it didn't work out. All right, so I need to cycle one card to get back to an Elixir Collector. Do I Bar Barrel other side? He doesn't have Tornado. Hmm. I'm just going to Bar Barrel, I think, and save my Elite Barbarians. I can't cycle them because they're my best answer to Electro Giant, which he should be dropping at the river any second now. And the Lightning again. 
So this guy seems like a pretty good player from the looks of what I've seen. If I had Dark Prince, I would have to use my Elixir Collector on defense against the Electro Giant, which would have really sucked. So I'm happy that that's not the case. I kind of want to go in for a Lumberjack here and just see what he's up to. Um, this is going to be tough because there's a high probability that he's going to try to do some Tornado shenanigans. Uh, this Phoenix might have been a bad decision. We'll have to wait and see. He doesn't have Lightning in Cycle, so this will maybe work out if we play this well enough. We are able to kill the Golden Knight, but that Phoenix is going to be a potential problem. We'll have to wait and see. Remember, he doesn't have Lightning in Cycle, so I'm going to go for our Leaf Barbarians as quickly as we can. And then the Electro Dragon should be able to chain onto the Phoenix, so I don't know how big of an issue this will be. Okay, this is looking pretty bad for me. Alright, we're going to go Barbril. I'm going to go in the Elixir Collector, and I'm going to go for a Phoenix on his Phoenix, and then try to win this interaction. Because he's not back to Lightning, we can actually guarantee that we keep the Elixir Collector alive. That's kind of what we were trying to do. We were doing some weird dance with our opponent and being like, yo, just let me get an Elixir Collector down, all right? Can you just let that happen for once in your life? And he's like, okay, fine. I won't have a Lightning in Cycle for once because I dropped it on offense, uh, on top of your units. All right, so I'm going to try to get E-Barbs down, and then we'll see if we can uh, defend this. It's not going to be easy, but we're going to try our hardest. I'm going to go E-Barbs any second now. I thought he was going to click the Golden Knight. He did not. All right, he's going to Lightning here. Decent for me because I can get Electro Dragon now. And the only difficulty with this matchup in particular is the fact that he's got cannon, so my golem will definitely die to that almost every time. So it's not necessarily the easiest thing when that always happens for uh, uh, for him. All right, so we're going to do this. I guess I'm going to go in for E-Barbs. That was a really, really, really good barb roll, if you guys noticed that. If I didn't hit that, I might have lost the game. Um, I'm going to go in for a Lumberjack here as well, since we have a lot of crap counter-pushing. I don't know if it's going to work, but we have to get damage, so it's kind of what I'm vibing with at this point. Um, wait, I can go Golem at the river, I think, because I'm able to probably kill the Phoenix. And then if I can kill the Phoenix, then I can win the game. Because he doesn't have, um... Oh, well, that's... <laughs> it was optimistic, I guess. A little bit optimistic, I say. Alright, so he's going to Tornado to his back, most likely, and then he's going to go in for a cannon, if I had to guess. Yeah, that's exactly what we thought. Alright, so I'm going to try to get a Lumberjack down, because I think that's going to be a little bit better for us. And then it's going to be able to Rage up afterward. Fortunately for... Nope, our Phoenix is definitely dead. That sucks. Uh, the Golemites are not doing enough damage either. I need to go in for a Golem here. I need to get Electro Dragon down. So this game is going to be way more intense than usual. Just don't really like the matchup, specifically because he ends up having Cannon and Tornado. Alright, we're going to have to Tornado this back, so then maybe we can have the Electro Dragon chain on. And then we're going to have to get E-Barbs down. E-Barbs might not be able to kill the Golem in, or the, the Electro Giant fast enough. We'll have to wait and see. Um, I need to go in for a Phoenix here so I can win the battle at the river. And then we also are a little bit scared because he's probably able to defend and then break through. Um, we'll see what we can do. Try to go in for a tornado here. And then maybe our egg will stir five. It's not looking so good for us, guys. It's definitely not looking so spicy. All right. Um, I need to go in for this. He's probably going to be able to get a lightning down. Uh, I don't know if lightning... It definitely does enough, right? Wait. Wait. Maybe he's not able to lightning. I don't know. I don't know, guys. I'm really looking at this, and I think I lose barely. That's brutal. So, yeah, the matchup is slightly crappy if they end up having a cannon and also a tornado. Um, because they can lightning on top of your Electro Dragon and then lightning on the E-Barbs. I almost beat him. I think I played better, but you don't win every game you play. Uh, we'll bounce on the next one, and we'll play the deck again, and uh, we'll win this one if we don't get that type of matchup. Just realize, like, you do win and lose sometimes based off of matchups, and when that does happen, you're just kind of playing like poker. You're trying to increase your odds of winning every single time. That was really crappy, but it is what it is. Um, thank you guys for being here. All right, we're an Electro Dragon, same side as the Sparky. And then also, thank you, uh, Adam, for the $10. I will be reading the donations after this game. I don't want to lose another game in a row. Uh, looks like we actually have a pretty okay matchup here, so I'm happy with that. He's probably going to go Goblin Giant, which would be a bit annoying, but... Oh, he's going to Skeleton Barrel instead. This is way better. Yeah, so I can just do this. I think the Electro Dragon is going to give his value. Wow, wait, what? What? Put us up with everyone and having Lightning as soon as we switch to Electro Dragon. Okay. All right, I see how it is, Clash Royale. I'm going to go for Lumberjack here so we can keep the egg alive, so then he has to log it. Um, definitely not optimal for our opponent. Since he probably has a Skeleton Army, since we saw Skeleton Barrel, it just doesn't make sense for me to go for Leap Barbarians with this, because I would have to Tornado and I don't have enough Elixir. When you don't understand what your opponent's deck is, it's important for you not to overcommit. Also, he's got Lightning with Sparky, so it's just a weird deck. Um, I think I just E-Barbs here. I think I can stop the Prince before it charges. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay, I'm very wrong. So yeah, the Prince charge is pretty fast, I guess. Uh, I don't have to worry about the minions. They don't really matter to me. They're not going to do that much damage. Overall, it's a good trade because we ended up getting a plus two interaction there. If he decides the Skeleton Barrel, we can activate King Tower here. If you guys don't know this placement, it's really, really nice to do. Um, should be able to take no damage on our tower and then activate King Tower. Notice no damage. Oh, wait, I got a hit because I, uh, I guess the Skeleton Barrel was getting tanked for a short period of time. All right, we're going to go in for a Golem in the back since he just uses Lightning. He's down so much Elixir. And because we have the King Tower activated, I can defend a little bit more minimally with just a Barbarian Barrel, hopefully. 
So he's likely going to go in for a Sparky. So I don't want to go Lumberjack. I want to drop air cards that he can't annihilate with the Sparky. So I'm going to go in for Electro Dragon. I'm going to go in for a Phoenix. And we'll see what else we can do. Yeah, we're going to do that. Phoenix. And then see what we can do. This is the goal. We'll see how it works. If we can reset the Sparky, that'd be awesome for the second shot. Even if he activates King Tower, I hope that we just take the tower so it doesn't even matter. I genuinely think that Sparky placement was pretty bad because it's just going to allow me to continuously like do damage anyway, so I'm okay with it. I guess I go Lumberjack here. Um, I think I just want to go and defend minimally, so that's going to be our best bet. Um, I'm going to go Elite Barbarians on the other side, and then I can go Barbarian Girl afterward. I just want the Mega Knight to die, so that's all I really care about. Um... I guess I'm going to go Barbarian Barrel. No, no, no. I'm going to go... Yeah, yeah. I'm going to go Electro Dragon. It's going to be a bit more efficient. It's just going to cost the exact same, basically, as me going Barb Barrel and then Phoenix. So, well, it's actually going to cost even more. So, yeah. Um, I'm just going to do that instead. I'm going to Barb Barrel. We're going to go for Phoenix. And then I think we can defend with Tornado. The reason why I want to go Tornado if he spams a lot of stuff is because the Phoenix plus the death damage of the Phoenix and then the, the Tornado does kill the minions. So this looks like a win for me. As you guys can see, if we don't get a bad matchup, it's just going to be pretty easy. Even though this guy had Lightning with Sparky, it's just way too comfortable for you. If you go in for Elixir Collector, get an advantage. And if they've got Mega Knight, it is the easiest matchup in the world. This guy wasn't even able to use his Mega Knight because the Mega Knight died so freaking fast to our Dragon and then also the Phoenix. Just make sure that you know what your opponent's card cycle is and then you'll win most of the time. I also think that this Electro Dragon player was, or this Electro Giant player was not bad. And he was also running Phoenix plus Lightning. So he had multiple answers to my air cards. It was really close. I don't know. Sometimes we'll lose that. I was hoping that we'd go undefeated today, but I guess it does make me a little bit salty. <laughs> um, uh, all right. So that was the Golem deck that I love. This is one of my main decks in Clash Royale, and it's fitting that we were able to upgrade the Mastery all the way to level six. Feels good, man. Let's freaking go. We get those gems. The other good thing about playing in Classic Challenges is you're probably going to get your gems back just by playing a whole bunch of Masteries. You can also coincidentally just go to party mode and get masteries that way but you know that's a little bit less fun for me do you read this yeah i try to read every comment i can man so thanks for being here all right let's try to make sure that we read everything else 1v1 uh 1v1 bro i actually do 1v1 people i just don't 1v1 often on stream uh when i have a purpose on stream then i'm gonna fulfill that purpose um right now it's the push the ultimate champion with you guys live happy thanksgiving jake i'm thankful for you and all the entertainment and advice that you provide us sirs Love you, man, says Adam. Adam, I love you too, man. It's always nice to see you in the comment section too. I, I like seeing people consistently there. Also, Girish Kala, thank you so much for the 89. You are a legend, man. And I hope you're doing well. I really appreciate that. Uh, Tiger says, hey, Jake, hope you're having a great Wednesday. I am having a great Wednesday, my dude. Thank you for taking the time to be here and also supporting. Nice haircut. Thanks, man. I really like the haircut as well. All right, so the next deck. This deck is extremely good no matter where you are. If you're trying to push up ladder and you are struggling and you are just getting destroyed, I have a video for you and I'm going to go and post that in the chat. I uh, have the best deck to push up to 6,500 trophies and coincidentally, it is this deck. If you want to push the 6,500 trophies and unlo unlock every single card in the game, this is the deck that you want to play. And I'm going to give a shout out to this video that I created with my editor. Um, I think this was really good. I'm going to spam it in the chat if you guys want to go look at the chat, whether you're on a VOD or right now, you guys can click on it and this gives a really in-depth guide on how to play it. Typically, you can run Knight or Valkyrie in the deck. And you can also run Skeleton King when you have it unlocked. Those are the cards that I would recommend. I would not run, recommend Monkinus. I also would not recommend Phoenix because I think that Phoenix will eventually get nerfed. So I'd much rather run the standard version with Baby Dragon, Ice Wizard, Knight, and then also Skeleton King if you have that unlocked instead of Knight. Skeleton King is better. Um, main way that you play this is you defend, you find out what your opponent's deck is, then you go in for graveyards plus poison when you're at two or a double elixir, where you have enough elixir to actually be able to afford that. In single elixir, if you go for a knight in a graveyard, that's going to cost eight elixir. And a lot of people do this, and they do it really poorly. You go eight elixir at the start of the game, and your opponent's got bats. Then you have to go in for poison. That's a solid 12 elixir. That's more elixir than you have because you only have 10 max, right? And then if your opponent drops two elixir bats and they go other side with aggression, you have nothing to defend. So make sure when you're going in for night plus graveyards and single elixir, you are up elixir and you identify what your opponent's deck is. Otherwise, wait until your opponent's, you know, card hand is shown, you know what their deck is, and you know that you can counter whatever counters they try to defend your graveyard with, which is the poison. 
Baby Dragon, Knight, and then also Barbarrel are your main ways of going in for Graveyard with this deck. Ice Wizard is more so defensive. If you're playing against decks that have bait cards that are really hard to afford Graveyard counter pushes, then sometimes you can just go for Graveyard and Poison and you'll get damage over time. And without a tank, that still works. Um, that's typically a double elixir thing when you figure out what your opponent's deck is. Anyway, let's jump into the next game and let's keep pushing up. Let's get it. You're sick? Uh, no, I just woke up. I know a lot of people think that, but like, I just woke up today, so uh, I'll, I'll have some water after this game, but yeah. Uh, whenever I wake up, my, my voice is definitely like this. Um, I, I just wanted to stream with you guys as soon as I could and get uh, a good video out. So hopefully you guys enjoy this and hopefully you guys enjoy the live stream. If I had Tornado, I would definitely just activate King Tower with that Lumberjack. Unfortunately, that didn't work out for us. If he goes in for a Balloon, we can definitely activate King Tower with this. So this is really, really good for us. So I'm hoping he plays poorly and freezes. That would be like a dream world scenario. He doesn't do it. I can go for a Graveyard, but I don't want to. I'd rather go for a Barbarian Barrel on top of the Executioner. Finish it off that way. And then consider going in for a Baby Dragon plus Graveyard afterward. Barbarian Barrel is going to give us a great trade on the Executioner. Going to drop it directly on the Executioner so it's able to get more shots there. And I'm going to Graveyard on the other side. Because sometimes when they see a Barbarian, even though the Barbarian is going to die, they're going to be more inclined to drop things there. The reason I went for a Graveyard in Single Elixir is because I was up so much Elixir and I activated King Tower and I identified what his win condition was. So there was no punishing potential for our opponent. The poison there, very aggressive. But at the same time, I know that the Executioner probably isn't going to give him that much value. And it's going to be hard for him to really, you know, apply aggression when we've got Ice Wizard, Tornado, and then a Tombstone. If you've got a Balloon deck and your best answer to our graveyard is Goblin Gang, well, guess what? I can Tornado your, your Balloon every single time on defense and just make sure that I have a good answer to you. I'm going to Ice Wizard here so that I can make sure that that's going to be able to stop the Lumberjack. And it'll also stay in that lane. So now he can't go in for a Balloon. You see the, the Rage, he wants to go in for the Balloon on that side, but he can't. It's not feasible. It's not allowed. Not up in here. <laughs> All right, so I can definitely Tornado this if I want. I don't think I need to, though. If he doesn't freeze, it's just not going to do anything. See, knowing those inter interactions is what sets apart, like, the best players with this deck from the people that, you know, maybe they don't have enough Elixir to go in for a Graveyard because they decide to go in for an extra Tornado. And it's just, it's just never worth it, you know? You want to play as well and as efficiently as possible so you can maximize your positive Elixir traits and you know, propel more stuff at your opponent. So I'm going to go for a poison here. I think that the Goblin Gang's going to walk into that, so I won't have to worry about it. Definitely a good trade for us overall. I can go for an Ice Wizard because I think that the tower is going to be able to, you know, finish off the rest of his annoying stuff, which is like the Ice Wizard and the Baby Dragon. And uh, yeah, I don't even think I have to respond to the P.E.K.K.A., do I? No, I do. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to go in for a Tombstone. And then I think I probably need to go in for a Tornado afterward. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah, I definitely do need to Tornado this. Um, I might even have to take a hit. So I'm going to go and do that. I will take the hit. And then I was hoping it would freeze. So I tried to Tornado and then get him there. It didn't really work out, but it is what it is. Sometimes you try to get your opponent to overspend because they feel like they're going to get a lot of damage. And it just, it just doesn't work as planned. It's totally fine, though. We can go for a Barbarian Barrel here. And then we can make sure that the Baby Dragon is going to get some help. And then we can go in for a Tombstone if the Baby Dragon is able to kill the Executioner. What it wasn't is it wasn't able to, which kind of sucks, but it's all good. All right, we're going to go Ice Wizard. He's playing this quite well right now. I'm very impressed by his gameplay, but still don't think it's going to be enough. I think that we're able to shut that down. Wow, he went other side. This guy is super aggressive. Really, really well played. Um, I wasn't expecting that at all, so. I'm going to go for a Tornado here, and then I'm going to go Tombstone just to guarantee that it's not going to go to any power damage. Um, remember, he's going to end up having uh, Goblin Gang as his main source of defense. So I'm just going to go for a Graveyard here, and then I'm going to poison the Goblin Gang. And then um, I think I can probably get a lot of damage as well. So that was the game plan. I didn't really want to overspend, and I also just wanted to focus on defending. So um, if I didn't do that, then I wouldn't have had Elixir to defend. So sometimes when you know that your opponent's just going to go Goblin Gang, you can guarantee that you're able to defend and poison at the same time instead of like dropping way too much Elixir. If I dropped too much, I probably would have lost this game. Oh, wow, that was really well played again. If he's got Freeze, he might win. I hope he doesn't have Freeze. That was really well played. That was an amazing Tornado on my Ice Wizard. But I guess I should have Ice Wizard here, so then he couldn't have done that. Well played on his end. He deserved that damage. That Goblin Gang was super risky, and that's going to hopefully lose him the game. We'll have to wait and see. He now has the Lumberjack twice on the same side, which is not good for him. We can Ice Wizard in the same side as well. Uh, we're going to get a Balloon from him. We can eat the Lumberjack because it doesn't matter to me. Um, I'm going to go Baby Dragon here. I'm going to keep going in for Graveyards whenever I get the chance. So we're going to go and do that. I'm going to go in for this. We know he's going to have Goblin Gang as his only answer. We're going to immediately poison it. We should be able to kill that quite nicely. So as you guys can see, I think that I'm able to win this one. I don't know uh, if he's able to put this one through. He's played this very well, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Maybe I'm wrong, but we'll see. 
I'm gonna go for another Barbarian Barrel, since that's gonna give us a lot of value. I'm gonna go for a Knight here. I'm gonna go in for a Graveyard. And then I should be able to get back to another Tombstone, pull the Balloon, and then pull off this one. I'm not crazy. I think we're fine. Tornado, Baby Dragon Lost Tower, and that should be GG. So that guy was really good. That might have been the best player we've played against all day. But as you guys can see, I went for a lot of Graveyards and Poisoned without having a tank for my Graveyard because I couldn't afford it. Sometimes I would, you'll need to save the Knight or save the Baby Dragon or Ice Wizard for that defense. This guy was really good. He tornadoed my Ice Wizard away. He got multiple hits with that Balloon. That is a quality player that I really respect. So that was a good win. Shows how strong our deck can be even when you play against great players. Um, even if they have like a good answer like Goblin Gang and they're always applying aggression when they're Goblin Ganging, you just make sure that you, you save enough Elixir to defend and you go in for graveyards with poison, just kill the Goblin Gang, you'll get damage while you stop their win condition from getting onto your tower. Great stuff, and I love the fact that we were down at 400 HP, but we were still able to win. Because our, our units, our graveyard skeletons, get directly on tower. And then, obviously, he doesn't get directly on tower with his P.E.K.K.A. So, he has to find his way through. He has to make multiple outplays. And even if you outplay me once, that's still not enough for you to get all your damage. He went for the, the, the balloon, was able to break through, really played well but still wasn't able to win simply because we were able to consistently get damage throughout the entire game where he struggled the entire time. Anyway, very, very good player. All right. Water is delicious. I hope that my voice feels rejuvenated. <laughs> I am now, uh, I've evolved, I guess. All right, so the next deck that we're gonna be playing today is this Mega Knight deck. Very broken. I love this thing. If you guys watched my recent video on it, it is probably one of my favorite decks in the game. You can keep up offense at all times. Mega Knight, Bandit, also Wall Breakers with Goblins plus Miner and Goblins plus Bats. Your entire deck is offense besides your, your Musketeer and your Zap. And the reason why we have Musketeer in this deck over Archer Queen is because you want to stack up multiple of them if your opponent's going to end up having a Lava Hound deck and you can only get one Archer Queen on the field. So if you go Archer Queen, your opponent goes Lava Hound, they can make sure that you don't get that much value from the Archer Queen because you only get one of them on the map. So they can kind of go all dance all around the map and screw you over, right? So Musketeer is really good. It also allows you to cost efficiently defend for less Elixir, whereas Archer Queen, you have to drop a five Elixir card and click a one Elixir ability. I know sometimes you might be like, well, that's only two more Elixir, but that two more Elixir could be spent on offense with Goblins, which can rack up thousands of damage for you. So just something to keep in mind. This deck is really aggressive. You can sub out Archer Queen for Musketeer if that's your preference. You can also put in Prince instead of Bandit if you want. Um, this is just a really, really good deck. And if you're losing a lot against Electro Giant, maybe you could put in a Mini P.E.K.K.A. instead of Bandit. But I would not recommend that. If I was doing Mini P.E.K.K.A., I would probably put in an Archer Queen over uh, Musketeers. And then you had a little bit more aggression because Archer Queen uh, is really aggressive. You can actually get damage with it, whereas the Musketeer, you can't. Um, the mini pack is more defensive, not as good on offense as a bandit. So then, you know, if you're losing the offense here, you're going to have to gain the offense back here with the Archer Queen. So, just makes sense. Um, let's get into the action. Let's keep up the aggression and make sure our opponents always add a low elixir count with this deck. This one is the most aggressive deck out of all the decks I'm going to be showing today. Uh, you do not let up. So first thing first, we're going to go for goblins. I love goblins right now in the meta because they defend against graveyard so efficiently. And graveyard is one of the best win conditions, if not the best in the game. And also on top of that, they do a lot of damage with Miner. So it's just a really, really, really overpowered card. And that's why most pro players are using it. It's just a great card to learn and play right now. I'm going to expect this guy not to be good enough to activate King Tower with the Wall Breakers. We'll have to wait and see if he is. Uh, yeah, so he's not. That's kind of what we expected. All right, I'm going to go in for Bandits plus Miner. And then we can go Goblins round on top of the Bowler. Or we can go in for a Bandit. The reason why I went Miner in the back and Bats is because we saw that our opponent didn't have a good card cycle. Right? He went in for his Tornado. So what does he not have for the, the Miner? <laughs> no Tornado. So we're going to take advantage of that every single time. All right, we can go Wall Breakers aggressively right now. And since he's going to end up having uh, Bowler Electro Wizard, I think it's going to be a Graveyard deck. He's going to eat this damage, and he's probably going to Graveyard me. Uh, so I've got Bats, and I have Musketeer. So I'll stop his Baby Dragon or whatever dragon he's dropping at the river with the Musketeer, and then I'll Bats in the Graveyard, if that's what he is planning. This is a really easy guess for him because he knows that he has Tornado. Okay, he's got Monk. Not that scary for me. I can just Mega Knight same side. So he's definitely going to gear up for a graveyard push. This guy is going to be mad annoying. So I want to ban it as soon as I can just to make sure that we keep his elixir low so then he can't graveyard efficiently. He might tornado this to the King Tower if he's playing this competently. He does. So he's a good player. Respect to him. I didn't know if he was going to be good enough to do that. He was good enough to do that. 
bats will be able to clean up the rest of the baby dragon, so it's not the end of the world. And then obviously Monk is overpowered, but it's not overpowered enough for that to work for you. He's going to bowler here, so I don't want to go in for this. I kind of want to go opposite lane with goblins and minor. Um, yeah, so that was a pretty obvious prediction. We're going to go wall breakers, and then we're going to go in for minor here. He's probably going to go electro wizard, so I want to go goblins afterward, if possible. So I want him to e wiz on this, and I want to kill it with the... Oh. Wow, he's going to freeze instead. Wait, what the heck? Now he's going to e wiz. Okay, that, 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 was, that was really well played. I thought he was going to go e-wiz, but I guess I maybe dropped that a little bit too soon. Notice how the bowler just missed the bandit. Really important stuff for you guys to do. Make sure that you utilize your bandit so then uh, your, your dash gets you a lot of value. All right, so he hasn't gotten a single successful graveyard yet just because I've not allowed him to. Um, he doesn't have bowler in cycle, so I can go in for this. Then I can go minor. He's got Inferno Dragon, unfortunately, for us. Maybe the miner is going to be able to tag for the bats for a little bit of time. I don't know how much damage we're going to get. Hopefully we can get a lot. Interesting Inferno Dragon. Wait, if I zap this... I think that the Mega Knight's going to jump. Oh, what the heck? No way. Bro, my Mega Knight just does not want to get exercised today. That was that was not good. Um, all right, we got to go here and then do this. Then the Inferno Dragon locks onto that. Then we can go Goblins afterward. Notice how much damage I got because I'm keeping aggression up. A lot of people would be like, how do you defend? Well, I mean, I guess I can't defend if he's got Freeze. <laughs> no, 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 no. Dude, I can't believe you have Freeze. That's so cheese. But yeah, he ended up having Mega Knight counter with the uh, Monk and then also ended up having Freeze. So he, he cheesed his way to victory. Um, I definitely do not think I got outplayed there, but sometimes it does happen. Wow, we lost to Electro Giant and we lost to Graveyard Freeze with Monk. So we did lose to two gimmicky or cheesy decks today, but it is kind of Clash Royale sometimes. You do lose to people that are worse than you in some points and you're just like, what can you do? You just go to the next game and you bounce onward. Um, Ultimate Champion, so easy, shake my head. It was pretty easy until he pulled out the Freeze Cheese. I definitely uh, made some pretty good predictions and stuff, but I, I'm not a huge fan of how uh, gimmicky Freeze is. I think it should get a nerf. That's my opinion. I also think Monk needs a nerf, and I also think that Phoenix needs another nerf. But maybe you guys feel differently on that. I don't know. Um, anyway, we'll go in for a minor here, and we'll see what we can do. I definitely messed that up. I really, really was not supposed to take that damage, but it's all good. Love the video. Thanks, man. I'm glad that you're here. Appreciate you. Um, you played well, but a little bit overstep on the end. I did not overstep. Unfortunately, it's just there was no possibility for me to defend that. Um, it kind of sucked, but it is what it is. Um, I might lose right now. Oh, man, I, I didn't focus on this game. Rip. No, we wanted to play this one well. And Phoenix is really annoying when you mess up. Yeah, this game, if I lose this one, it's totally my fault. So as you guys can see, this one takes a little... This deck that I'm playing right now definitely takes a little bit more concentration than regular. I'll play one really cheesy deck. I'll get my wins back, and then uh, we'll go back to the other decks afterwards. Actually, we'll show the other decks. I I'll get one win with this right after this, um, and then we'll continue to play. This is interesting. He's got Tesla. We can still maybe win this one if I play it perfect, but it's really, really hard to break through Phoenixes when you've messed up like this. Um, all right, so we're going to go Mega Knight in the back since the Tesla's out of cycle, and we'll focus up for the rest of these games. I can't, uh, I can't not focus when I'm playing against Phoenix. If you don't, then you're just going to lose. That's my fault. That is totally my fault. This Mega Knight deck is really good. It just requires a little bit more attention, a little bit more focus. Played pretty well last game, but obviously it wasn't good enough. Um, Battle Ram is interesting. I don't know how well this is going to work for us, but we need to try to be able to break through. Bandit is going to give us some damage. We can go in for a Miner here, and then we can maybe go for Wall Breakers, depending on what he's going to do. Or we can go Bats, because we want to kill whatever he's going to drop on the Musketeer. Okay? Okay, we're coming back in the game. We're coming back in the game, guys. I believe. I believe. We're good enough to do this. Let's go. Maybe. I <laughs> don't know. I'm going to go in for wall breakers. Those wall breakers are bad. One of them dies. Okay. Wait, this is not terrible. I thought that was an egg. My bad. All right, we're going to go miner here. Wait, he missed? The zap is probably not good enough. I need to go Mega Knight on everything and then just spam. There's still a chance I can win this one, guys. He's definitely overcommitting like a crazy person. Why does everyone have lightning? I'm so lucky that I'm not running Electro Giant anymore. <laughs> not Electro Giant, Electro Dragon, sorry. Nice. Okay, this is definitely winnable. Okay. Okay. Phoenix is so OP, but I don't think it's enough for you to win this one. Hopefully. All right, we're gonna do this. Okay. 
Okay, we're gonna drop this a little bit further away. Uh, I'm gonna go goblins. He's gonna lightning me twice, and he'll probably win if I don't like do some cheese here. We needed the bandit to dash, and it's not gonna work. At least he's able to lightning me, I think. Oh! Okay. So the way I was able to win that one is I Mega Knighted in the back when he dropped his Tesla and then I was able to build up a big push. Wow, I did not pay attention at all at the start. I should have lost that game. Alright, so <laughs> huge misplay on my end. I just want to review what I did wrong. A um, couple things. I dropped the Musketeer a little bit early so then the tower wasn't able to focus down the uh, fly machine, which is really bad. Uh, the fly machine, as you guys can see, wasn't getting targeted by the tower. The goblins also missed the fly machine. Just wasn't paying attention. My mechanics are good enough to never miss that. But, and then we mi we minored right into guards, and then he had the phoenix still stay alive. And we were just down so much elixir without a musketeer in hand, and he had a phoenix coming at me. And uh, then he went battering other side, so I obviously couldn't mega knight left. So what I should have done, I think, is mega knight left, and then bandit on the battle ram as it connects to my tower, and then the bandit will be able to still soak up the bar the, the battle ram barbarians. But I did the worst play possible. I didn't kill the Phoenix Egg, and I just lost my entire tower. So if I could have done anything different, the Mega Knight would have been able to uh, soak up the Phoenix damage. And it, as the Phoenix pops, I kill it with the Mega Knight in the tower. And then the Bandit soaks up all the damage from the Barbarians. So I just want to always look at my losses and look at things that I don't understand. Where the heck did I go wrong? I just show you guys all of my mistakes there, right? And if I had done that differently, this game would have been super easy for me. But I didn't, so I kind of kind of botched the bag there. Um, that's, I guess, one of the best things that you can do if you're ever losing a lot when you don't understand what you did wrong. Like, that type of game, when I didn't know, I'm gonna look back at it. If I lose because of matchup or whatever or something dumb, then I'm just gonna be like, okay, that's unfortunate. There isn't too much I could have done there. Freeze is a little bit broken when he's able to get 2,000 damage on my tower at that one point and then barely win at, like, 600 HP. Like, these type of games you look at and you're like, okay, so, um, I bandit here, he eats an entire bandit and wall breakers. And then, like, just all ins me, and then, like, somehow doesn't lose his tower there, and then somehow is able to just wreck us. Even though we've got goblins, and then we have zap for the, um, the, the, the skeletons, we just, we didn't have enough, you know? Like, there just, there physically wasn't any capability in me defending that. And then I look at that, and I'm like, okay, I'll go to the next one. I wish that my bandit and wallbreakers were able to take out the left-hand tower, because if it was a tower trade, then I would have definitely taken out the right-hand side, too, because his tower was so low. So you just look at that and you're like, okay, we can chalk that up to a bad loss when we go to the next one. But this game, if I lost that, totally my fault. And all those mistakes that I just showed would have helped me improve as a player and get better at later on. Anyway, we go to the next one. Is uh, Phoenix Goblin Barrel Mirror good? Probably not. It's okay. It's not great. All right, so this deck is really good. As you guys can see, you have to focus a little bit more. You suck like me. Maybe you're going to end up losing. So that's, uh, that's that for that one. All right, so the next deck. Wait, did I show? Yeah, I showed these. All right, so this is the next deck. This is a P.E.K.K.A. Executioner Phoenix deck. If you don't have Phoenix, you can always run Inferno Dragon. This deck is disgusting at crushing all the other Phoenix decks in the game. It is so good against Electro Giant because P.E.K.K.A. kills it. And then also on top of that, it is really fun to play because it's freaking freeze. You can be so bad and win with it. So just, I, I guess it was a perfect segue reviewing my loss and then showing you guys the deck that you can be terrible at and still win. Um, it's, it's kind of cool. It's nice to say that. Um, we'll also show you guys another really toxic deck. Um, if you guys are enjoying the video, by the way, make sure to leave a like, no matter if you're watching this on VOD or if you're watching it live. I hope you guys are having a great day. And if you, if you feel like supporting me, feel free to just drop a like on the video because it goes a long way. It pushes the video out to more people. They see it more often. And then, you know, it's a good vibe. Also, um, subscribe to the channel because I post a daily video at 3 p.m. Eastern every single day. Or I do a live stream like I am today. Also, I hope you guys are having a freaking amazing day. Thank you guys for being here. Um, all right, so we're not doing anything until double elixir with this deck, primarily because this deck's cost of its cards, look at it, it's five elixir, seven elixir, four elixir, four elixir. I don't want to drop anything here. I'm looking at my hand, I'm like, if I go in for a Phoenix, maybe you go in for an Executioner, and then I'm down elixir, and then you graveyard me, and I lose. I don't want to lose. <laughs> so because your cost of your cards are so high, it's better for you to get to the late game double or triple elixir because you can afford all the cost of your cards way more frequently. So it's it's just something to keep in mind. Depending on your deck, you're going to play differently. That Mega Knight deck that I just played earlier, I was on offense at all points in time because I want to keep my opponent's elixir low so then they can't get to late game afford their dumb graveyard freeze push and win the game. 
And now the, the roles are reversed. I'm that graveyard freeze player that wants to get to late game, spam my stuff because there's no way you can counter my, my freeze. There's nothing you can do. There's literally nothing in the game that stops this. If you don't have poison or mother witch or like, you know, even if you have mother witch, I freeze it in late game and then I kill your piggies with my executioner. So it's not, I don't even care. But that's just, that's kind of how the game works in the later stages. Anyway, um, yeah, so I'm going to go Phoenix now since it is Double Elixir. I don't want to leak too much. Oh, we guessed the right side with the Barred Barrel. Well, we guessed the left side, but it was the right side. If you guys picking up what I'm putting down. And then, obviously, we're going to go Executioner in the same side. All right, so I want to go in for a Graveyard Freeze with this Phoenix. Ooh, he's going to have uh, Graveyard Poison. So not necessarily the best matchup, but it is winnable. Um, I have won this before. I guess I'm just showing you guys the tougher matchup sometimes today. <laughs> I'm still going to freeze that because I want my Phoenix to give me more value. And then we're gonna go in Tornado, the uh, Valkyrie closer together, so then the Executioner is just able to continuously pop off. It's one of the most fun things to do, going for a P.E.K.K.A. at the river when you're up Elixir, because it's so hard for the opponent to defend. Look, the P.E.K.K.A. is actually tanking for the Executioner, forcing out the poison, and now he has nothing for the graveyard. He's, he's done for, right? Right? Tell me I didn't outplay this guy, and you'd be lying to yourself. Well, maybe maybe you wouldn't be, because I'm running Graveyard Freeze, but... Look, look at, look at the skill. It's oozing through my veins. This is how talented I am at Clash Trial, guys. My Phoenix, look at that. I, I'm, I'm just too good. I'm too good for this game right now. <laughs> the the Graveyard Freeze. Uh, the, the one good play that I did that entire game was... Oh, wait. This is a little bit sketchy. I think I'm an Electro Wizard here. I should be fine. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I hope I don't lose to this because that would suck. I think we win. Yeah. All right. That was a really smart play, him trading me, because I went for a P.E.K.K.A. and a great uh, Executioner at the river, and I didn't have any Elixir, so I think I played like an idiot. But it's okay. It's okay. You can still suck and win with Grey Red Freeze. <laughs> that's enough roasting that deck for today. Um, I think that's... I, I genuinely believe it's more brainless than, like, Elixir Golem, and... Um, yeah, it's definitely more brainless than Elixir Golem, and it's definitely more brainless than Electro Giant. Electro Giant, you actually have to break through buildings. And Elixir Golem, like, a lot of times, like, you have to find the right opportunities. But I think that this is just, like, if you don't want to think, you get to the late game, you get to double or triple Elixir, and then you Graveyard Tower. And that's it. <laughs> You're probably going to be fine. <laughs> it's, it's awesome. All right, so, yeah, um, let me show you some other decks, too. Uh, I'll, I'll show you guys some champion decks as well. So, this deck, easy brainless. I have a video coming out on it. So, spoiler alert, this is one of the most fun decks I have ever played in my life. You can literally use the monk to reflect and protect your giant skeleton, reflect spells so they can't kill your mother witch, bounce back barbarian barrels that would go in your goblin gang, and keep the arrows away from your skeleton barrel and cloned up stuff. How is this fair? I don't know. I, I genuinely don't know. So you guys can push all the way to the top an ultimate champion. If you have all cards unlocked and you're bad at the game, great deck to play. The only thing that you have to learn how to do is click the one elixir monk ability. So just don't drop your one elixir monk ability into a P.E.K.K.A. and you'll be fine. Uh, let's go. Let's keep going. How to get Monk uh, without reaching 6,500? You pay money in their offers, and I would not recommend doing it. Never never buy those offers, guys. I, I, <laughs> I know I'm a content creator that makes money off of the creator code, but I don't want you guys to get scammed. Buy Pass Rowl if you want to spend money on the game, and that's the only thing that's worth it. All right, so this guy's going to go mini packy. He went for Snowball, so I feel like not a really good start for our homie here. Obviously, we can go Giant Skeleton, and then we can go in for like a Skeleton Barrel afterward, and then uh, watch as we get an absurd amount of value. I'm not a huge fan of this, but never mind. I'm a, I'm a massive fan, bro. I'm, I, I don't know what I was talking about. I'm, I'm the biggest fan that the world has ever seen. I'm the whole air conditioner out here. Bro, this is, this is awesome. The Graveyard are on defense. If I clicked the Monk ability, I think I would have gotten like a thousand more damage, but I wasn't having those fast cat light reflexes. I can still go Skeleton Barrel. I don't care. If you go in for a Snowball, you're still going to take damage from the death damage of the Skeleton Barrel. And you might not be good enough to hit your Snowball timing perfectly. He's going to go Skeleton Army instead. That's three Elixir for three right down the drain. And now he's in pain because he took damage. As you guys can see, this deck is really fun. And then if he goes Mini Pack other side, I'm just going to die laughing because I've got Goblin Gang. So it won't work because if he Snowballs on the Goblin Gang, it stays alive. Okay, that's fine too. I think I just do this. And then I go in for Goblin Gang. And then I'm able to defend. Because you're going to probably snowball, and then the piggies are going to just be able to kill everything. Oh, he's going to arrows and snowball, but he misses the... He missed it. <laughs> he missed it. Oh, no. He doesn't have skeleton army because he just used it, remember? He used the skeleton army on the uh, on the skeleton barrel, so he doesn't have an encycle for the giant skeleton. But if you have that type of 
uh, ability to like understand your opponent's card cycle, this deck just becomes so much better. You don't need to, but you can, you know, That's which is always cool. I'm gonna go and click the, um, the ability. The monk is gonna stay alive. <laughs> he's dead. <laughs> Man, I'm dead is what he's saying right now. And the game's over, so. Sometimes, um, I, I was showing you guys how to push up without running champions, but if you really want to ruin the game for every opponent you play against, this is the deck. This is definitely the deck. And yeah, you can go and click on mainstream videos and mainstream Elixir Golem, Phoenix, Monk decks, but I'm telling you, this deck is better. And I, I, I hope I wouldn't lie to you guys. <laughs> I hope I wouldn't lie to you. I, I, the good thing that I do is I scour all the top pros and I see what decks they're playing in professional environments. And then also in competitive, like they're trying to hide decks and I steal those decks sometimes. And this is one of those decks from a top level Japanese player. So uh, yeah, this deck is really, really good. And not too many people know about it. It's a sneak peek from before I released the video. I made a video on this and um, yeah, it's, it's coming out soon and it'll show you guys five delicious games in a row. And uh, that would be really fun. But th yeah, this deck is super, super Omega Ultra broken. Um, this deck as well, if you guys want to run a version of this deck that doesn't have Royal Hogs because Royal Hogs got nerfed. And then also, if you don't necessarily like, you know, maybe not running a champion because you have all your cards unlocked or you have champions, this is a great deck to play as well. Super, super Omega broken again. You've got Zappies and Mother Witch, and then also Skeleton King with Goblin Gang Skeleton Army, so you're always able to, you know, be the full mobile gaming athlete that you want with full bars like Verizon, AT&T, that Skeleton King. He's got full bars everywhere he goes at all points in time because of the Skeleton Army and Goblin Gang. So, really good deck. I think this is the last game before we hit Ultimate Champion, so we're going to play a brand new deck. As I said, we're going to be trying to switch decks every single time. Love you guys, and uh, hopefully we get Ultimate Champion now. Let's freaking go. No mediocre. Also, um, yeah, uh, if you guys are enjoying this, make sure to drop a like. If you guys are new, if you want to, um, feel free to drop a like to support the channel. And subscribe because I put out daily videos at 3 p.m. Eastern. Every single day is a high-quality video. Should have skeleton barreled, but it's okay. Wait, this guy's got level 12 <laughs> skeletons. Oh, I feel bad. <laughs> oh, no. Is this guy actually running 2.6? The 2.6 could hypothetically be a difficult matchup if he plays it perfectly. Because I don't have a building. Oh, he's not going to have 2.6. Okay. Do we minor wall breakers into this? Or do we minor wall breakers other side? I think we minor wall breakers other side. I don't want to go into the uh, annoying archer queen right now. He's going to go and click the ability earlier than he should have, I think. Why would you click it earlier when my skeleton king wasn't even going to target it? You're crazy, man. You're a wild child. So he's going to give me fireball value. I think he's going to pre-log. Yeah, that was too obvious. You wouldn't go and drop your entire elixir bank unless you were going to pre-log when you knew that I had goblin gang in cycle. So you literally telegraphed what you wanted to do. We're not going to fall for that ever. And then we go in for a Skeleton Army Miner and then force out the, uh, the uh, Royal Delivery. The Miner gives us a lot of damage on the tower. We kind of go same side. And if I went for Mother Witch here, we do get one Piggy. I think probably not bad, right? Probably not bad. Oh, wait, what? What? You got to be joking, right? That, that Skeleton was 100 million percent ahead of the Royal Delivery. And yet, my Mother Witch had the audacity to target that Royal Delivery. You guys got to let me know in the comment section or in the live chat that you saw that too. That was quite possibly the dumbest interaction I have seen all day. Clash Trial, that would have been memed in my YouTube videos. We would have memed that to no end, bro. That, that was actually crazy. <laughs> oh, man. That was Omega tilting. Um, yeah, that wasn't a vibe. I'm going to go guards, counter. Oh, wait, no, he doesn't have guards. That was the last guy that we play against. I had that. All right, so I can't really do much. Um, the wall breakers are probably going to get countered by skeletons unless the level 12 skeletons suck. I, they're not that bad, I guess. Is he going to do anything with that? He's going to Earthquake. Okay, that's pretty smart, but it still dies. It'll give him damage, though. Yeah, I don't think this matchup's good for me. Obviously, he's got uh, Earthquake, Log, and Royal Delivery, so he's got three small spells. And he's got a, uh, you know, a cannon with Archer Queen that I can't kill because I can't Fireball plus arrows on an Archer Queen. Fireball, Log does not kill, so very, very tough matchup, actually. We'll see how we can do what we do, but, you know, it's not going to be easy. I'm going to try to just go for the Archer Queen ability, or the uh, Skeleton King ability. Maybe we can kill the Archer Queen and get a Piggy. Nope, I'm not getting lucky. I'm not getting lucky. Okay, I, I just, I didn't get lucky at all. This is, this is absolutely traumatic. I made predictions, but it wasn't enough. Sometimes you get these matchups and you look at yourself and you're like, okay, Clash Row, I'm just trying to show a cool deck right now. Can you not do this to me? Bruh. All right, we're in a Skeleton King here. We're probably dead, but there's always a chance, right? There's always a chance when you got Skeleton King. Sometimes your opponent just doesn't play the game correctly and then Skeleton King lost on a tower and you win. That'd be kind of cool, but it's very unlikely at this point. We will just Archer Queen here. Um, 
Let me go wall breakers other side. I love that he's able to royal delivery and then um, just earthquake immediately and get a lot of value. That no one ever. Uh, yeah, I lose. I can't do anything in this matchup. It's actually 100 0. So sometimes this happens. I think this has happened way too often today. <laughs> I've gotten really, really, really unlucky sometimes. Uh, this this should not happen in Clash Royale. I'm sorry, guys. Um, but anyway, we'll go to the next game. This was a, uh, a matchup that Mugi or Mohammed Light would not be able to win because it's actually that bad. The guy had a rail delivery log and earthquake with just. I don't know. <laughs> it's just. Something that I can't kill because I don't even have splash damage for that. I don't even have log. But yeah, that's that's actually the worst matchup in the entire um, existence, I guess. Which happens, but it is what it is. Um, we're going to go back to this deck because we want to get another fast win. And then we'll go back to the other deck afterwards. Um, I'll be using decks if he's showing off if I have them maxed out. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Please use my deck. I am not going to be using different decks today, guys. I'm going to be using decks that are really good. Um, your decks might be really good, but I haven't tested them out. So uh, I don't really want to showcase decks that are not top tier decks. Uh, I'm trying to show the best decks that I would use to reach ultimate champion if I wanted. This deck is really, really good, by the way. The one that we're showing right now. But I should win this game very quickly if he messes up once. He did just use log. So I think I can go Goblin Gang here if we wanted. Or we can kite with the Skeleton Barrel. Um, I think I'm going to go Mother Witch, actually. Yeah, I think Mother Witch is probably the play. So the Mother Witch is going to be able to kill the Phoenix. Turn it into an egg, and then the Mother Witch will give us counter push, which I like a little bit more, especially if he's going to go and use this poison like that. So now we're going to wait with our monk. We're not going to actually, I'm going to click the ability. Why not? Maybe fireballs or something. He did it. Okay, so I kind of thought he would. He did log afterward. Still fine though. Like, it doesn't necessarily matter. Like, the monk is still going to do a lot of damage to the tower or force out an ice spirit and then still get a hit. Nice. That's a lot of damage. We're, we're currently winning the game. Not too bad for me. I can go in for Zappies here. Catch uh, his Miner, and then hopefully stop his Phoenix from doing any damage to my tower. If we get a Poison, that's just icing on the cake at this point. So this guy is going to lose his Phoenix. It's not going to get any damage. We can go in for a Giant Skeleton at the river, and then we can also go for a clone if we want to. Um, he doesn't have Login Cycle, so maybe we can go Goblin Gang with this, actually. Yeah, I think I want to, because he doesn't have Goblin... He doesn't have Login Cycle since he d dropped it on defense, so he has to Poison. And then if you don't have Poison in Cycle, maybe we can go for a clone Giant Skeleton afterward. You guys are seeing my thought process here, right? Free OP to uh, use Giant Skeleton and bait out your opponent's clone when they or uh, clone counters. Really nice to do. I should have went in for the Mother Witch. I would have gotten two free piggies. That was a huge misplay, but it's okay. It doesn't matter that much. I remember the guy's got log. That's gonna be his best answer. Oh, we should have Mother Witch. I don't think it's gonna give us a pig. Yeah. If I did a little bit faster, we would have gotten the pig. It's okay though. Um, we're gonna Skeleton Barrel here. Remember, he doesn't have poison, so we can go in for the clone. Gonna go Bomb Tower, but that doesn't even pull. So. Game will probably be ours. He's going to log a little bit early. Skeletons are going to give us so much freaking damage. As you guys can see, it's a pretty pretty strong concept. We're going to log here. I'm not going to try to hit the tower because it's not worth it. I don't want to just like miss one Spear Goblin for no reason. All right, we can go in for a giant skeleton here. Uh, I want a skeleton barrel on the right-hand side because I want to force out Elixir there. I want him to drop like some spell, whether it's a bomb tower or like a, a log or a, or a poison or anything. It'd be pretty nice. And the skeletons are on the outside, so they're able to kill the bomb tower a little bit faster, actually. So that's good. So we're going to do dual lane aggression, I think. We do get a piggy if we can kill the phoenix, which we do. Nice. Goblin gang will probably bait out the log, which is really big. We can do this. I'm going to go monk. Monk with the zappies is going to be fun. And then we can go in for the goblin uh, gang counter with the mother witch on the other side. Probably going to poison there, and he does. Now we can go in for a skeleton barrel clone on the other side with the goblin gang. Wait, I didn't get the Goblin Gang down. Ah, that sucks. Okay, I can still clone this. Wait, is this going to win me the game? I think it does. I don't think he has anything. Because he uses the poison and he uses log, so he's dead. Yeah, no, he's dead. That's what we were trying to do. You want to bait out your opponent's poison and log. Um, or bait out, like, their spells. Or bait out whatever they have. And then you identify their card cycle. And then whatever you have left over, you just clone it in the other side. Sometimes, you can take out an entire tower. You don't have to ram your head into a brick wall in the same side at all points. A lot of people have that huge misconception. All right, so we're going to go back to this deck, and we're going to pray to the Clash Royale heavens that we do not get screwed by someone having a 100-0 matchup, because, <laughs> bro, I don't deserve it. I don't deserve it. I don't deserve that. I, maybe I do. I have really bad karma after running that clone deck. All right, we go to the next game. Uh, all right, so this deck, uh, this is the Wall Breakers minor deck that's really strong, as long as you don't play against Rail Delivery, Earthquake, Rail Hogs with also Log. That's the only thing that I think is difficult. 
All right, we're gonna go wall breakers here. He's gonna go for fire spirit, which isn't too bad for us. We can actually eat the fire spirit, then miter here. Oh, he's no way. Don't say this is another hog rider deck. This would be traumatic. No, bro, you gotta be joking me right now. This is a straight up joke. This is this is absolutely sinister, Clash Royale. Okay, so um, we're gonna show you how to beat the the matchup that we lost to. Hopefully, let's go, Diego. Go! I'm so dead. <laughs> no. You gotta be joking right now. This is absolutely sinister. Where's what is Clash Royale doing to me right now, guys? What the heck? All right, so the Zappies are gonna give us mad value, but we have to fireball here. Oh no, this is absolutely tragic. <laughs> <laughs> this deck isn't even that popular anymore, right? Okay, so we're gonna go Miner and Wall Breaker. So we're gonna try to get a Cannon out of him with the Wall Breaker so then we can get a positive Elixir trade and the Cannon's not gonna hit the Miner. So we're definitely outplaying him right now. The fact that he's taking damage from the Miner and then doing a negative trade is awesome. Uh, we kind of want to go Goblin Gang on the other side so then he logs it and then the Skeleton King can hopefully kill the Archer Queen. Um, so that's what we're gonna be planning on doing. Please log it, please log it, please log it. No, that's terrible on your end. Okay. Um, that's a huge oopsie. My man did an oopsie. Oh, yeah, he did an oopsie, guys. Wait, can I go Mother Witch here and get two piggies? Mother Witch, don't screw me over like you did last time. Give me two. Give me two. Give me two. Why did you just give me one? No, man. That's not what we wanted. Not at all. You done goofed it, Aaron. You done goofed. All right, we can Miner with this because we should get a piggy from that Royal Delivery. Nice. The Miner Piggy Push. Miner Piggy Push. Yo, we got a cannon out of him. I can actually beat a 100 on matchup. I, I feel it. I feel it right now. The skill is oozing up from our veins, guys, with the Skeleton King. The Skill King. The Skill King. All right, we're going to Zappies here. We're going to go for a Fireball again. Please pre-log me, Daddy. Oh, he's not doing it. Okay. I hate him. Um, we can go in for a Skeleton King and the same side where he's going to have to spam us. We can then, consequently, you just use the Zappies. Get him to log. Nice. Oh, he's going to Royal Delivery me. I'm an idiot. Wait, does he not have Royal Delivery since he has Fire Spirit? I don't think he does, actually. Oh, he does. Ah, uh, I forgot. I'm bad. All right, um, why do you do that? You just not have any idea what you're doing? No, you don't. Okay, cool. We'll take that. Um, so he's got a log. We go Goblin Gang. He's going to Royal Delivery it. We want to Mother Witch this. And now we get a Piggy. Nice stuff. All right. Nice. Missed it again. He's actually throwing. He's selling so hard. I'm, I'm eating what you're selling, bro. I think I win. Nope. So 207 is what the fireball does. I just need a one minor hit. That's it. He actually lost. That's 100 0. All right. So apparently you can win this matchup. It's just, um, it's not, it's not good. You have to fireball on the Royal Hogs and hopefully they miss spells multiple times in a row. And then if they miss spells multiple times in a row, maybe you can somehow get Goblin Gang chip damage on the other tower. <laughs> that matchup should never be possible. So yeah, we screwed around a bit. We have a 57% win rate, but uh, yeah, that's okay. Uh, we end up, we'll end up pushing up a lot. We'll push up a lot. I did push up a lot at the start of this, the uh, thing. I guess my win rate is a little bit lower than usual, but we still did pretty okay. We hit ultimate champion today and we had a lot of fun in this process. Getting sniped? No, definitely not getting sniped. Just unlucky, just unlucky sometimes. So we'll play one more game just to show you guys what, uh, what we can do, what ultimate champion is like, I guess. And uh, here's my profile. We end up having 7,370 trophies. We end up having um, 21 in the world finish and 7,400 legacy best and then all this other stuff. Um, it's kind of cool to have this type of um, this banner. I also have every single banner unlocked, which is pretty nice. Well, almost every banner. Wait, guys, I, I forgot about this. We'll be getting the peaceful plateau today. Let's get it. Let's unlock this today really quick. Beautiful, baby. So that was the last banner available, and we're going to go and use that right now, actually, with our archer, isn't it? I, th I feel like it just looks so serene. I think that that fitting scene is awesome. All right, so we'll be playing one more game, and then we will end the stream afterwards. What happens after Ultimate Champion? I'll show you guys. So if anyone was wondering about Ultimate Champion, um, we'll show you guys really quick. Let's freaking go. All right, so we can just go Goblin Gang here and try to get some early damage. He's going to Hog Rider me, and we can Giant Skeleton. That's totally fine. So I could log that back or I could just let it do its thing. I kind of just want to let it do its thing and then make sure that we have more elixir. You can push top 10k after you hit ultimate champion. Yeah, 100%. But I don't want to go and spend my entire day doing that. I might do that for like videos and you guys will see me push up further and further. And I think that will be kind of fun. 
But this stream was just to hit Ultimate Champion, and I was able to show a lot of different decks, decks that I like. And if you ever get bad matchups, just realize that you're going to eventually get good matchups. Like, there, in Clash Royale, you get good and bad matchups. You don't always just get great matchups. So you kind of have to get through the bad ones to get to the good ones. And that's, that's how it will always work, for me at least. All right, so I want to do this. Oh, wow, that, that was tragic. Uh, well played. I kind of didn't expect him to rocket a Mother Witch, but he did. He rocketed a Mother Witch in that. That was unfortunate. Well played. I really, really, really wanted to like knock that back. He did it before Cross the River, so then he knew that I wouldn't be able to reflect it. I, if I crossed the river, it would be obvious that I would click the Monk ability, so that was well played on his end, actually. All right, we're just going to go Zappy so we can accommodate both sides since I don't know which side he's going to go in. So he can't go through the, with the Hog Rider immediately. My Giant Skeleton and the Musketeer, that's kind of bad, so I want a Giant Skeleton in the far back so that he's not able to build up a huge push. So we know that he's going to have Rocket, so he's only going to have Log and he's not going to have Earthquake, right? So he can't, like, you know, break through this as efficiently as he would want. We can log this back as well, just so we limit the hard rider damage if it even gets a hit, which it doesn't. Pretty big. Alright, so remember, he doesn't have anything besides log, right? So, we might be able to get a really nice clone here if I can hit it correctly. Yes, I do. Nice. Lots of skeletons gonna be tanking for that Mother Witch. Oh, baby! That's massive damage. That's huge. Emotional damage. He's gonna hog rider any second. Uh, he did use his log, so he can't kill the Goblin Gang. The Goblin Gang will be able to finish off the Hog Rider for only one hit on our tower, which isn't too bad. We'll take that every day of the week. Giant Skeleton in the back. I don't think he rockets this. There's a chance he does. He's switching sides, which is kind of respectable. I messed up. I think that Ice Spirit jumps. Should have logged first. I just hesitated. Sometimes that does happen to me. I, I'm not obviously a perfect human being. A lot of times I'll mess up. It is what it is. Musketeer is going to give us a lot of grief. Wait, we can go Monk here because it kills the cannon. So he can't log the Spear Goblins, which is obviously going to give him a little bit more uh, trouble. He can log here, so then the Hog Rider hopefully doesn't get a hit, but it might. It does. Okay. I think we Giant Skeleton so the Musketeer dies. And then he's not going to have Login Cycle, so he can't break through the Goblin Gang. He's going to do this. We're going to log back the Hog Rider. Skeleton Barrel should connect for a lot of damage. And that's going to give us a huge lead, I think. Not as much as we wanted, but it's still good. I think I lose because he should just be able to rocket me. Because I don't even have my monk, so I can't... Wait. 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 No way, right? No way, right? No, I don't win. He's gonna rock it. Unless? 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 Please. 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 Oh my god. That'd be so crazy. Be the most ridiculous win ever. Nah, it was too close. It was too close for comfort. GG. Oh, I hate losing games like that. It always happens on stream where I end up losing games like that. It's always like, man, if I play that off stream, I'd probably have won. But it is what it is. We'll try one more. GG, well played to our opponent. We'll go to the next one. I'm not a huge fan of losing to Rocket Cycle, as you guys already know. I think it is just... Ugh. I played it yesterday, and I won a lot of games with it. And then right now, we lose to it, and we're like, oh, come on, man. So it is what it is. I hate losing to Hog Rider more than anything in these type of... Um, when we don't have buildings, I really hate losing to Hog Rider. It's totally winnable, especially because he didn't end up having um, the version that was extremely scary. Like, he didn't have a rail delivery, but... I just, I don't like playing against Hog Rider when we don't have buildings. It's basically what, what it comes down to, I guess. I'll rage quit every time I play when, oh yeah. I, th that's why you should play classic challenges if your card levels are a little bit under. GG? Yeah, GG. I wish that the monk uh, did a little bit more damage there. <laughs> Feels bad, man. I wish I also clicked the monk ability a little bit uh, differently, I guess. Oh, wait, watch this. Here we go. Screw your Hog Rider deck. Got a Hog Rider deck. Wait, the Musketeer is going to die now? 
then we can get a lot of damage. So that's kind of why we like Monk. It's able to tag for our giant skeletons. We're able to build up bigger pushes in most situations. If you're able to go in for the giant skeleton and the Monk in front, they can't log. Obviously, if they have a Musketeer or a Bomb Tower, it kind of gets reflected. So it's kind of cool from that perspective. Uh, this will probably be like the Phoenix deck, or it will be a balloon, um, a balloon deck with Miner and Musketeer. So I don't know, but we'll see. All right, so we're going to go Goblin Gang on the right-hand side just to get some damage. Unfortunately, I don't have the right the best card cycle right now, so I want to go and support this as possible. Okay, so it's going to be um, it's going to be Balloon, 100%. I don't have a Zappy, so this is bad. It's winnable, but it's bad. I want to clone this, so maybe we can go and kill the Musketeer a little bit faster. That was terrible, actually. I don't even think the Musketeer walks into it. Okay, it did. Decent, I guess. Um, I don't want to log this, but I might have to. Or I can Skeleton Barrel instead. I think Skeleton Barrel is slightly better because it'll probably force out a same response with him Bar Barreling or Snowballing. I don't think he's just going to get away with like a cheap Elixir investment. So yeah, he's going to Miner instead. That's even better. All right, so since we know that he's going to end up having <coughs> a Balloon deck, right? We just want to go in for Zappies to counter the Balloon if possible. And then Giant Skeleton right after. So that's what our game plan was. And it worked out pretty well. He's going to Ice Golem on the other side. That's even better for us now. Um, we kind of want to go in for a Mother Witch and then clone everything if we can, since we can build up a push on both sides. I'm going to log here. Mother Witch did a lot of damage to the right-hand side, and we're kind of in a great spot. That's what, how we want to play this matchup, if possible. Just do dual lane pressure and whatever we can, and hopefully have the Monk tank for the Bomb Tower, whenever that works. Uh, so we're going to Giant Skeleton on the same side. He used uh, Bard Barrel, so now if he goes Ice Golem, we go Goblin Gang on Ice Golem to kill it really quickly. And then we go in for Zappies on top of the other balloon. And then if he Miners, we should still be fine. Even if he Snowballs, I'm not super scared about it. That's exactly what we expected, and it didn't work out for our opponent, so that's good. We can go for a Monk here. And then we can go in for Bam on the other side if we need to, which I probably want to. Alright, we're going to go and click the Clone. And see if we can make him uh, get finessed by that. Okay, so the goblins did a lot of damage, but it's not the end of the world. We've got the zappies and the monk on the left-hand side, so that might just win us the game. Yeah, monk is just straight up overpowered sometimes. <laughs> you guys are looking at the right-hand tower, and you're like, you know, maybe it's going to win with log cycle. Maybe the goblins are going to lock on a tower, but the monk's just like, nah. Give me that filet fish. Give me that fish. All right, cool. That's awesome. Jeez. Happy early Thanksgiving. Thanks, man. Yeah, so we pushed the ultimate champion today. I will definitely be pushing up more in videos so you guys can stay tuned for me pushing up ranks and having fun with that. Um, huge thank you to everyone that is here. Love you guys watching this. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to like, subscribe for daily videos. And most importantly, if you guys are having Thanksgiving or any holiday around the world, or even if you're not celebrating anything, I hope you guys have an awesome time and a great rest of your day. I love you guys. See you in the next one. Subscribe and uh, just stay awesome. Stay awesome, positive people. Whenever I read the comment section, whenever I read the chat, it always makes me a little bit happier. So thank you guys for being here, and I'll see you in the next one. Comment down below in the description or in the comment section what you guys want to see for future streams. If you guys want to see me playing versus viewers again, I'm definitely down to do that again in the future. I'm also super down to do more live streams where I push Ultimate Champion at the end of the season or something. Um, yeah, let me know. I played a variety of different decks. I think all of these decks are pretty good. You did find some of the weaknesses to all of them, like... I guess uh, the decks without buildings definitely do not do as well against Hog Rider. I guess the Graveyard Freeze, you didn't really find a weakness for. But it can struggle if you get a King Tower activation with a Fisherman on the Executioner. So if you play against Royal Giant decks, make sure you never give them King Tower activations with your Executioner. And then um, this one, if you just are complacent and you don't keep up the aggression, you'll lose. But if you do that, then you're fine. This deck, really not many weaknesses at all. Run Skeleton King instead of Knight if you can. And then lastly, this deck, Skeleton Dragons instead of the Phoenix or um, Baby Dragon if... You don't have Phoenix leveled up. Anyway, peace, love, and positivity. I'll see you guys in the next one. See you later.